Rigetti is a full stack quantum computing company. We're here to build the world's most powerful computers. We fab our own chips. We build all of the infrastructure inside the refrigerator, the dilution refrigerator. We build control systems and we build software around it. The fact that we do the full stack means that we have tight control over the tolerances and execution parameters of all pieces of the system. And as it turns out, that matters a lot for performance. So what we find is that by having that level of control, we can actually eke the most out of every part of the system into a functioning high performance whole. We were one of the first people to build a captive fab to do nothing other than make uh, superconducting qubit chips. And we've learned a lot about both how to you know, operate the facility, what kinds of tools and materials to use, but most importantly, how to integrate it into the way we do R&D amongst the physicists and the other engineers in the company. One of the big innovations I have been working on since almost the beginning of my time here that's really taking center stage for us soon is our multi-chip architecture. We want to make lots of small chips and have them be you know, linked together through coherent uh, interlinks that allow for entanglement across chip boundaries. And that means that rather than having to constantly be making our chips bigger and dealing with yield issues and kind of reinventing the wheel every time we go to a larger size, we can just keep making the same building blocks over and over again and just put more and more of them together like a puzzle. And that, I think, is going to really accelerate our ability to, to scale not only quickly, but also with confidence that as we scale, nothing's really changing. It's just we're just adding more things, tiling more things out laterally. We were the first company in the world to produce superconducting qubits out of multiple chips and get entanglement across the chip boundaries. This was with our, our Aspen uh, M-Class systems where we took two 40Q devices and turned them into a functioning 80Q device. They were up on the web and Amazon, on our own systems and such. Recently with our Anka architecture, we've begun experimenting with nine qubits as a fundamental unit. We're going to be producing this year a 36 qubit system uh, out of four 9Qs. We'll also be producing a 108 qubit system uh, later uh, this year. We expect to get fidelities in the 99.5% uh, 2 qubit gate regime out of this. So we feel really confident our, our ability scale, both because we've done it before and because it's a big part of our roadmap uh, moving forward. At this early stage of the development of the quantum computing industry, many, if not most, of our customers are using our systems for fundamental research. They are also using these quantum systems to experiment with algorithms. On the government side, you have national laboratories. In the US, those fall under the US Department of Energy. But you have other government institutions and programs as well. Very often, what they're acquiring a Rigetti system to do is to accelerate and enable their own research agendas. On the academic side, you have universities. And in those cases, it's typically a physics department or an engineering department that wants to acquire a quantum system to be used both for educational purposes, but in many cases, those professors are also carrying out their own research. We build full-scale, state-of-the-art quantum computing systems that we provide to folks on premises. So we'll install the system, maintain it, run it for you. We offer those same systems over the cloud. In addition to that, in the last year and a half or so, we recently started building QPUs. These QPUs go under the brand name Novera. They're relatively small qubit count systems, but they're designed essentially as a plug-and-play alternative to a big full on-prem system that you might have to purchase yourself. They're focused predominantly on research and education activities, but we know that folks are using for a variety of those activities and other production-oriented activities. Seems like they make really good entry points into the beginnings of error correction analysis as well. Our technology is open, it's modular, it's constructed in a way that it's easy for our partners, our customers to get in there and to experiment, to swap pieces in and out. But a second piece is the people side. We see ourselves as pursuing science. We see ourselves as citizens in a scientific community. And as such, we consider the collaboration as really important to raising the tide, which itself is going to raise all boats. And we believe in that and we live by it. My biggest hope for the impact on quantum computing is that quantum computers will go farther than classical computers ever could when it comes to things like drug discovery, materials discovery, things that really matter to, to our world around us and can have, you know, affect tremendous change on individuals. We want to make our systems bigger, and we want to make the 
the qubits better, the, the circuits better, the systems better. The second characteristic is gearing more towards fault tolerance. And we, as well as you know, many of our collaborators and partners and competitors, we're all working towards uh, building systems that demonstrate the beginnings of fault tolerant uh, error correcting codes. And we're gonna be gearing a lot of our basic hardware development towards that uh, in increasing ways. We have, as an industry, been talking about quantum advantage, quantum utility, these notions of when will quantum computers become useful? When will they contribute? When will they actually be better than their classical counterparts? That is palpable, that is visible, that is on the horizon. And I feel that everybody around me in the quantum community is experiencing that and, and, and has that excitement, that, that anticipation, that passion. It is a fantastic time to be part of the quantum computing industry.